Hey, what's up you guys? It's Six. Welcome back to my channel. So if you are a recurring video of a recurring video, a recurring viewer of this channel, you will have uh, heard me say pretty much since January that I have been talking about how I want to make a video seeing if I could make professional looking art using crayons. And I don't mean professional materials. I don't mean Conte crayons. I'm talking like legit Crayola crayons or rose art or crazy art. I, I'm not picky. Um, but today we have the ever so classic Crayolas and I went all out because I even got the bougie little box with the sharpener on the back. Five-year-old me would have lost their little mind. Uh, but anyway, as you can see, here we finally are. So when I first thought about tackling this video, I was really indecisive about how I wanted to handle this material. I wasn't sure if I would go all out with the crayons, like sketch to finish, or if I should treat it like my other traditional pieces and go straight into doing the line art digitally and then finishing it off with color. Um, originally, I did plan to do the former with that apple painting that I made all the way back in February, uh, but as you guys may recall, I really I realized that I wanted to do that piece in gouache instead because I had these cute um, what were intended to be pumpkins but ended up looking like apple canvases so obviously uh, I executed it with gouache instead like I said. Uh, so that actually ended up being one of my favorite pieces that I have done in recent time but that is not the point. <laughs> the point is that doing so uh, left me back at square one. I again didn't know what I was going to draw or how I wanted to handle this medium. Was I going to use them like handed like I would with a coloring book as a kid because I used to do this thing where I would do a really dark outline and then I would fill everything in very gently uh, or was I going to use them like an oil pack? pastel and try to layer them thickly uh, on each other and you know get some blending action going. I genuinely had uh, no idea <laughs> but as you guys can see I eventually ended up uh, in somewhat of a middle ground, I had intended to go the former route with uh, a lot of a, a lighter handed approach and I think I definitely executed that well um, on her clothing. However, when I began to render her skin, uh, I ended up layering it way thicker than I thought uh, that I was because the color that I used was just so light. Um, and to get any form of pigment down, I, I was scrubbing and I didn't realize it was really thick. And I realized that if I uh, went with a more lighter hand approach throughout the rest of the piece, then it would look really weird. Uh, so I ended up settling on a middle ground, as I said. Uh, and I also wanted to do the sketch digitally as I'd already drawn something up earlier this month um, as a warm up that I thought would be really cute for this piece. So I ended up cleaning it up and turning it into this little cottage core sheep character. Uh, I then did the line art, but rather than printing it onto my final paper, I made the questionable decision to use my iPad as a light box for the first time in probably like half a year uh, and do the line art with crayons. I did not want this piece to feel like a coloring book. Uh, I really wanted the crayon to be the star of the show and I felt like with digital line art it's like duh the end result will look nice because the lines look nice. I, I hope. I like the character. Um, everything looks pretty so it would just be like a coloring book and it would look nice automatically because you've got nice lines and it has color on it now and it would not matter what medium I used it would just end up looking good no matter what because the base of it is good uh, so if I start off from square one with everything being crayon I can see what the actual experience of using these uh, will be like which by the way if you're still sitting here listening to me how do you pronounce crayon please leave a comment down below because I am very curious I think I have said it several different times in this video um, I grew up in the Midwest, so I say crayon, but I also am in the middle of the United States, so I grew up around people who say it all sorts of ways. So how do you pronounce it? I'm very curious to hear. Uh, anyway, getting into the actual piece. Uh, so like I mentioned previously, I sketched this girly all the way back in early April as a warm-up, and originally she was just a head and shoulders, as a lot of my portraits tend to be, but I am trying to give my portraits a little more interest without necessarily going overboard like I have been. I'm trying to force myself to do like really dramatic lighting or <laughs> expressions or um, what do they call it, like poses, angles, stuff like that. Um, 
I've instead just been trying to do subtle little things uh, to my portraits so that they're still in my comfort zone but still have some interest and that way I'm improving uh, naturally uh, and not like trying to force it. Uh, I also noticed when adding in further details like the clothing for this particular piece uh, that I was going for my regular kind of go-to puffy sleeves and ruffly collar um, just from memory so I decided I would instead of trying to um, direct myself away from that that I would then try to uh, embrace that and go over to Pinterest to get a closer look and see some actual real life examples of that aesthetic rather than just doing it straight from imagination uh, as I normally would have and I am so glad that I did that because looking at the shapes of the sleeves and the bodice I think really helped improve the silhouette and actual gave off this like sweet but sassy farm girl look that I was going for rather than just like kind of like random poofy aesthetic that I had prior so I was really happy with that. Um, her expression also was originally a lot more mischievous but I ended up settling on this kind of like soft smile because she was giving me really like kind southern springy nice girl vibes so uh yeah ideally i also would have given her some kind of floral element because i had a last or, or no i'm getting ahead of myself i wanted to give her some kind of floral element uh however i was exhausted on the days that i was working on this piece um because i had a last minute just absolute catastrophe uh, that I needed to get settled. I will talk more about this actually in the Patreon podcast. Uh, if you are on Patreon, you either will be hearing it very soon or you have already heard it, so you already know. But if you're not there yet, make sure to head over there and check that out because it's it's a lot um anyway because of that though i ended up keeping things more simple which i am grateful for because it made doing the line art much much easier um the line art was way more uh it, it i say that it was easier but it also was difficult um it, it it just was way more it was confusing it was it was way more confusing than i thought it was going to be um i was really like okay so back from square one i was really dancing between doing um a, a black or just generally dark colored line art as i tend to do with like my digital work i'll go with like a dark red or purple or blue or something like that or doing colored lines to suit the actual area of the piece i was lining at the time um as you can see i ended up going with colored lines because i figured since i bought the dang fancy set with all of the colors I should use all the dying colors. Um, I already had a pretty solid idea in mind for the palette anyway. Uh, I knew I wanted a green dress, blonde hair, and like a warmish skin tone. So doing colored line art in my mind wasn't going to be all that more difficult than doing just a darker color. Um, and I also, despite having a bigger uh, color range, um, didn't have a lot of darker colors. It was like black and purple. So uh, I definitely didn't want to go that route uh and i i really thought that um doing colored line art would have been a lot simpler and i was so wrong about that <laughs> um so when i first opened the box to look at all of the colors i was a little overwhelmed because they weren't placed in a gradient or anything like that so it was really difficult to see uh which colors were where and i was somewhat avoidant of doing swatches because i didn't want to mess up the box or anything because of the way that they're placed in there um and ultimately uh that was just me being spooky and procrastinating so i decided to go ahead and do some swatches it was some of the colors i didn't want to do all of them so i just kind of tried to poke around and find ones that I thought that I would use and swatch them. Uh, I ended up finding all of the colors that I needed for this piece, luckily. Ironically though, in doing so, I ended up finding one that was totally naked. No idea what color this is. He's bald. It, no skin. He's naked. It's why? It, it's like this reddish brown color. I would imagine it's like maroon or something, but literally the wrapping, and it's the only one in the whole set like this, just gone. And it, it's not in the box anywhere. So they just saw this naked guy and packed him up, gave him to me. What are the odds of all of the boxes of crayons in this Target? I would manage to pull one that has a naked crayon, a mystery crayon. Uh, and I did end up using him because I thought it was 
so funny, uh, but it also ironically was close enough to one of the colors that I needed to use. Uh, so anyway, we have progressed into coloring, which you guys have obviously been seeing this whole entire time. Uh, by the way, let me know if you guys actually like me jumping straight into color, or if you guys want to see me work from sketch to finish more often. Um, I'm more hesitant to do sketch to finish most of the time because sketching on camera is so much pressure, but at the same time, I do understand you guys wanting to see the process more. Um, I used to put the digital sketch up in the corner of the screen for you guys to see, but I stopped doing that because it was really fussy to edit and I felt like it kind of uh, obstructed the actual focal point of the video. But again, if you guys want to see more of the sketching process, let me know and I will be sure to find some sort of way to do that. Um, so speaking about the coloring process in general, um, I had problems almost immediately. At first, I was almost overly ambitious with this. I started out with the um, lining her skin, and the color that I was using was a lot of a harder, waxier one, so it, it made it seem so easy. Uh, and then the colors weren't quite right, so I went over it with a little bit of a mauve, because it was like, it was really orangey, and I was like, that's not right. I kind of like to do a more like reddish purple tone, so I went over and I started lining it, and I was like, this looks beautiful. It looks great. I got all of the pieces of her skin done and I was like that's perfect and then I went and I started to work on her hair and the brown was so soft and crumbly uh, some crayons are just way crumblier than others which made it a lot more difficult to control them so that was really unfortunate because I ended up totally I feel like botching her hair which was my favorite part of this whole piece was her freaking bright. I thought it was so pretty. Um, and I ended up butchering it a little bit. Um, I also tried, ironically, unfortunately, to use the sharpener that every kid begs for. We all beg for the sharpener. Don't say you don't. I know you do. We all know we beg for the sharpener. It don't work that good. <laughs> it's, it's uh, honestly pretty bad. Um, not for the purpose of sharpening a crayon, but for the purpose of sharpening a crayon in the way that I wanted it to. I wanted it to be a really, really fine point because these babies get dull so fast. And you guys have heard me talk about before, um, I like mechanical pencils because they're a really fine line. I hate colored pencils because they break before I can get, to, uh, get them to that point. It's really frustrating. Uh, so doing so with a crayon was really hard. I started out using um, the, obviously the box sharpener, realized that that wasn't going to work because it was going to sharpen them down to a blunt point, obviously. Um, uh, so I swapped over to a more traditional um, pencil sharpener, realized that that wasn't going to work because uh, of the way that crayons are shaped. So the smaller edge is fine, but then once you get up to that first like notch where it like spreads out into the cylinder part of the crayon and not the cone part, it doesn't fit in the sharpener anymore. So I had to switch to a literal wood carving knife <laughs> and I was chiseling away at these crayons and I was making such a mess and I was still having that issue that I do with color pencils where it was breaking before I was able to get it sharp enough. But eventually I got everything lined. Um, I mixed some purples every so often in places like the hair, again, like the skin, um, just because I thought it would add some more interest, some more color um, that I would like. Um, also in the middle of lining, I killed Bald. I snapped him. <laughs> I'm so sad about it. You guys might've seen me um, throughout this. I don't know if I actually picked him up in the actual filming portion of the video where I was trying to color everything, but I did. I, I was I was sharpening him and I snapped him in half and it was so sad and he was the only one that broke. Every single other crayon in this video was not harmed except for Bald. <laughs> he, he must have really needed that skin to protect him and he just, he didn't have it. He, di he didn't make it. It was so sad. I did keep him. I did try my best to tuck him back into the box, both pieces of him, because uh, luckily it was only the two pieces. It, it could have been more, um, so that's lucky for him, I guess. Um, but yeah, the line art process itself was, was very frustrating. I am grateful that I did not um, film that because I think it would have turned out worse if I had. Um, I think I would have um, definitely overthought it a bit too much if I had been filming that. So I am grateful that I did just go 
straight into filming the color. Um, so when it came to actually rendering, however, that was an entirely different process. So um, I think my favorite part of this whole piece is actually her dress um, because every crayon did what I wanted it to in that portion. Um, her sleeves I did with a really soft kind of like bluish gray um, and I didn't have um, a color that was like similar in tone to that. So I just kind of really went with a very light hand and added the shading in with the same color that I used for the line art which I think looked great. I thought it was very soft. You could definitely tell it was just like a white sleeve with a nice shadow on it. And then her dress, the shading on it just turned out so pretty. Um, the green, both of the greens that I used, the olive green and I think it's asparagus, um, were uh, a really hard waxy one. They weren't one of the softer, crumblier ones. So all of the blending just turned out absolutely beautiful um, with those two and I am really pleased with how the dress turned out. But her skin, okay, I'm so on the fence about how her skin looked. Some aspects, like the shading on um, her arms and her neck, I thought turned out really pretty, but then when it came to shading her face, I was super frustrated with it because I could not get um, enough, uh, enough depth. Wow, that, those are two hard words to say after each other. I couldn't get the right amount of depth in her face. Um, whereas, you know, normally I like to do a lot of shading, a lot of, I have a, I, I put a lot of focus into, um, rendering the skin and stuff like that and I could not do that with this piece because it just wasn't going. <laughs> the colors were not wanting to layer. Um, they were all really close in uh, value to each other and then the ones that weren't really close in value were really far off <laughs> and so I couldn't get those nice like mid-tones that I wanted but I really tried my best um, and I, I think I got somewhere but I think I'm definitely gonna go back and like render this piece like digitally because I think that it's really pretty and I think it deserves um, a more polished version, but it was really fun to do this with crayon. Another thing I'm really upset about is her hair. Um, when I did the swatch for her hair, it was a lot lighter, but then obviously because I was having to use a bit of a heavier hand, the color ended up looking more brown. I think you can still tell that she's supposed to be blonde, but it's a lot more of a darker blonde than I wanted it. I was imagining like a lot more of like a, a straw blonde and I ended up with kind of like a, a very again like a light brown sort of color which isn't bad it's not bad i still think it's it's really pretty um color scheme wise it's just not what i was going for uh and again it just everything it was really crumbly i was having the biggest issue with any time i would try to go in and add some contrast it would be like boom crumbles and you're also stuck there yeah i can't get these these crumbly bits off of this piece and so um that was really really frustrating because it was like why are you doing that <laughs> please get off um even on like little random parts where I hadn't already colored on it just like on the side of the page it's just like nope I'm clinging here this is my place I'm not leaving um so that was really weird <laughs> um and then I think the last thing that really frustrated me was her face um this is a kind of again more in the uh line art sort of area um just the smaller details were not they weren't going they were not um smalling as uh i guess you can say um they just weren't as precise as i would have liked them to be and i think i lost that really sweet expression i think she ended up looking a little bit more um scarier <laughs> than i intended her to uh overall i think she's cute um hopefully you guys are seeing right now um the finished quote unquote version uh where i just did um you know with just the crayon but then i go in later and i add some finer details with a little bit of copic marker just in her uh her eyes like i said because i couldn't get that sharpness that i wanted and then the corners of her mouth a little bit on her nose and then her eyes because her eyes i could not i knew i wasn't going to be able to get um things like her pupil in there or the correct amount of like shading and then i did go in and add a tiny tiny bit of uh just some gel highlights because I have to. <laughs> I thought it would look really cute. Um, yeah, but again, overall, I do like this piece, but I am, I don't, I don't think I would do crayon start to finish again, or if I did, I would work on a much bigger canvas. I think that might help 
um, but at the same time that might give me more of that crumbly action which I'm really I'm really on the fence about I definitely don't think this piece looks bad um, but I I absolutely wish I had more control over the material when it comes to uh, this piece but overall let me know what you guys think about it let me know if you liked it um, are you inspired to work with crayons at any point in time uh, after seeing this video I hope you are because it was really fun and I would recommend at least trying to get in touch with your roots little get a little uh inner child artist action going but anyway that is it for this video you guys before we head out i just want to give a big shout out to my patrons so we actually have a couple new patrons here so we have elise thompson duran mandy sleeps created by twins inky moo art steph psychwalker 13 and our three newest patrons we have lucian at crowboy sketch uh fish nor flesh and becky scribbles so thank you guys so much for joining the patreon it means so much that this relaunch has been like so successful and that you guys have been enjoying it so much and actually like jumping on to join like it's absolutely blowing my mind um that you guys have been enjoying everything so much and i i definitely feel um a lot better about this new iteration of patreon i've definitely planned things a lot better it's been a lot more um, comfortable and freeing to do I've been really enjoying making content over there so if that is something that you guys are interested in make sure you go over there and check that out um, and remember April 30th is the absolute last day to join to get April's merch rewards so that is something that is very important if you are looking to get those because if you missed um, last week's video I did mention that I will no longer be putting up patreon rewards in my Etsy shop at the end of the following month it will actually just everything's going to be patreon exclusive for now um, if you want older designs say you join in May but you missed April's designs and really like them hopefully sometime in the future I will be introducing um, a secret shop that newer patrons can go and shop older designs but until that happens the 30th is the absolute last day that you can get April's rewards and it is also the absolute last day that you will be getting five free entire stickers uh, with your merch that is just for April since it is again the relaunch month and my birthday month I thought it would be fun to give you guys a little gift as well so yeah if that is something you're interested in again it is patreon.com slash six studios anyway I love you guys so so much and I'll see y'all in the next one bye